Hi Daniel, I'm going to try and take you through the things you need to do to get Young's double slit interference occurring with a laser. Now, the laser I'm going to use can be seen here. Basically, it's a really old one, it's about 20 or 30 years old, but it's going to pretty much be similar to the tiny laser pen that hopefully you're going to use for this experiment. It's going to have a really similar power, you can see it's output power is um, less than one milliwatt which is actually the same as you find in a standard laser pen these days and it's kind of the, the uh, wavelength is going to emit at is 632.8 nanometers so that's going to mean it's going to occur in the red part of the uh, visible spectrum now if I turn the laser on hopefully uh, on the black part there you should see the dot okay if I zoom in that's our uh, laser beam okay and it's a very tight beam that you can see there so now to get the diffraction, diffraction occurring to cause the interference, I'm basically using three pieces of metal wire that have been placed into a bit of blue tack. Okay, very low fire. Okay, as I said, you could use for this um, three pieces of graphite from a refillable pencil. Now, as you can see here, in between, I've got my double slits. Okay, occurring between those three pieces of wire. The pieces of wire are about two millimeters apart. Now you can play around with that but I've found that seems to be working pretty well. What I'm going to do is place, as you can see here, place the um, the pieces of wire over the front of the laser. Now this may take a little bit of jiggering about. Now hopefully if I zoom in you can see as I move it around can you see the laser beam kind of getting wider Okay, and that's because diffraction's occurring. Now what I'm going to do is I play with it a little bit more until I'm kind of happy. Now to me that looks like I'm getting quite a nice down there from here, which is I'm about, I would say, five meters away. I'm getting quite a nice diffraction pattern there. So what I'll do is I'll come down, we'll zoom in, and I'll turn the lights off and hopefully you'll be able to see it. So as I come down, I'll zoom in a bit. Hopefully you can see it. Now what I'll do is I'll turn the light off. Okay, so with the light off now, hopefully you can see the interference pattern. Okay, I've zoomed in as much as possible. You can see the uh, bright central part. Okay, that's called the first maxima there. And that's where the two peaks from the first waves are kind of coming together, causing constructive interference. And that's going to be the brightest part. Around that, you can see dark patches or dark fringes okay that's where the peak of one wave is hitting the trough of another wave and you can imagine they're cancelling out you're getting what's called deconstructive interference essentially they're smoothing out okay now around that you can see again you're getting bright and dark fringes okay and again that's where you're getting constructive interference and destructive interference where you're getting the dark patches the reason why okay they're getting dimmer or fainter as you move out Hopefully you can see it. And actually, can you see it here? It's actually going out for about six or seven inches either side. Okay, so you can get it. You can see it getting there and it gets fainter as you go away. It's basically the waves uh, passing through one slit are kind of, how could I put it, less intense or less uh, big. Okay, they have a smaller amplitude, basically. And when they interfere constructively with waves from the other slit, they also have a smaller um amplitude and that means the brightness of the light when they constructively interfere is going to be less it's like ripples on a pond okay the further you get from where the stone has dropped the ripples are going to get uh, smaller in amplitude and that's exactly what's happening here the further you get away from where the uh, waves have passed through the slit the smaller their amplitude and that means when they interfere with each other you're going to get a kind of less intense light okay now as I said here you can see it passing all the way out hopefully if I zoom in a bit yeah get close you can see it's going out six or seven inches either side okay and that's a really nice central part there now you asked yesterday why you should use a red laser instead of a green one well a red laser is actually even though it is kind of a beam is actually kind of still slightly spread out a green laser has a tighter beam and a blue laser has a tighter beam still, so it goes red kind of less tight, then green, then blue is the tightest. If you were to use a green or a blue laser, those fringes would be closer together because essentially the, uh, the wavelengths are shorter on a green light and even shorter on a blue light. That means they're going to be less spread out. And so the differences between the dark and the bright patches are going to be harder to see. So that's why it's quite good to use a... Um, 
red laser instead of a green one. It's actually the reason why you've got Blu-ray discs. If you imagine a red laser in a conventional CD or DVD player, if you imagine it's like a needle on a record player that's about an inch thick, that means the groove it's going to need to travel along also needs to be about an inch thick. However, if you have a blue laser in Blu-ray, it would be like, say, having a sewing needle as the thickness of, on your record player. That means the track thickness also only needs to be the same width as your sewing needle and you can get a lot more information on your disc. Hence Blu-ray DVDs are a lot higher quality. Now hopefully you can see that fine. Again the distance from my laser beam down there to the interference pattern down here is about 5 or 6 meters. Okay, And you can see you're getting a very nice diffraction pattern. Now hopefully uh, that's uh, clear enough. You should be able to basically do this, as I say, with graphite from a pencil. One neat thing you could do as well, I've got some straw here and I'm going to have a play with it, is that actually you could use straw from outside in a garden, and this is just kind of wheat grass. You could use this as your uh, to form your double slits. Again, that may be quite nice because then you could kind of, I don't know, have a natural kind of feel to it. You might even be able to do it um, out in the sun I was thinking actually in using the sun's rays as your beam okay and then uh, getting diffraction basically from the sun that'd be quite a neat and natural way again very very low fire so you wouldn't even need your laser for that okay hopefully that's clear enough I'm going to have a try and have a play with the straw and see if I can get it to happen here you can see a ripple tank that's been placed on top of an overhead projector and you can see there the straight waves now a block is placed to make two double slits when the waves pass through it, now you can see there's diffraction happening through those slits and you're getting constructive and destructive interference. And these lines here are showing the destructive interference. This is what you would see if you were able to kind of freeze that laser beam in midair and you were able to look down on top of it before it hit the wall.